If we could see inside a reliable solder joint, we would find another product of chemical reaction, the intermetallic bond. In fact, the whole point of soldering is to achieve that intermetallic bond. But the intermetallic layer, if it exists, is covered with solder. The only way to see whether an intermetallic layer formed is by cross-sectioning the joint. Fortunately, however, we can see the result of intermetallic formation by the extent of solder flow across the metal surface. Solder flow is known as wetting. These two identical pieces of copper demonstrate wetting and non-wetting. Solder did not wet this piece of copper. It sits in a lump on top of the copper. In fact, we can actually lift the solder lump off the metal surface. On the other piece of copper, we find complete smooth solder flow. In other words, perfect wetting. We would not find any intermetallic on the non-wetted copper. Good wetting means an intermetallic bond was created, and intermetallic bonding means the joint is reliable. So, how do we guarantee our soldering will produce wetting? The first step towards guaranteed wetting is knowing the factors that affect it. The extent of wetting is determined by four natural forces. Not surprisingly, they are known as wetting forces. As we will see, only one of the wetting forces always promotes wetting. Two others always oppose wetting. And the fourth can help or hinder wetting. Proper wetting is achieved if and only if the sum of the positive forces is greater than the sum of the negative forces. Let's start with the negative wetting forces. The first is solder surface tension. All liquids have surface tension. The attraction between atoms on the liquid surface and those beneath the surface. With surface tension, the surface atoms are pulled towards the center of the liquid. The shape that brings the maximum number of surface atoms closest to the center is a sphere. So the liquid will attempt to draw itself into a ball in the absence of any other forces. Surface tension is why water beads up on smooth surfaces like this glass. To see that surface tension varies from one liquid to another, let's put some alcohol next to the water. The flow of the alcohol over the glass demonstrates that alcohol's surface tension is very weak. The surface tension of liquid solder is especially high as we can see by the beading action on this hot plate. Solder surface tension is the most powerful negative wetting force. The second negative wetting force is friction. The resistance encountered by a material as it slides, rolls, or flows over the surface of another object. The friction between two objects is greatest just before they begin to move. Friction is a modestly negative solder wetting force. The third wetting force is gravity, which pulls the liquid solder towards Earth. When solder is applied above the metal surface, as in hand soldering, the solder will be pulled towards that surface, a positive wetting force. If the solder is applied from beneath the surface, as in wave soldering or surface mount reflow, the solder will be drawn away from the surface, a negative wetting force. Therefore, gravity can be a positive or negative wetting force. Adding up the three forces identified so far, the net effect is strongly negative wetting. A strongly positive wetting force is required to overcome the resistance. That force is attraction between atoms on the metal surface and atoms on the solder surface. Metal atoms do not like existing in their pure form. When placed in contact with atoms of other metals, they form metal compounds. The attraction between tin and the metals typically found on the surfaces of electronic components is so powerful that it overcomes the sum of the negative wetting forces. However, the attraction occurs only if the solder atoms are in direct contact with the surface metal atoms. Good bonding occurred on the copper sample at the left because atoms of solder made direct contact with the copper's surface atoms. The attraction between atoms pulled the solder across the copper surface. On the copper sample at the right, there was no atom-to-atom -atom contact and therefore no attraction. Atom-to-atom -atom contact between the solder and the metal surface is essential. A barrier layer just one molecule thick between the metal surface and the solder will prevent the chemical reaction and the intermetallic bond. As it happens, every metal found in electronics assembly except gold is covered with a barrier layer. 
The layer is called metal oxide and consists of oxygen atoms bonded to metal atoms. Car owners may be very familiar with one particular type of oxide, iron oxide, more commonly known as rust. Oxides present problems. For example, oxides act as electrical insulators. And of particular concern to our soldering, solder cannot bond with an oxidized surface. That point is so important it deserves repeating. Intermetallic bonding cannot occur with an oxidized surface. Oxides must be removed before the solder is applied. The material used to remove oxide is called flux, the topic of the next lesson.